Tom here from Lauren Systems. We're going to talk about replacing failed drives inside of TrueNAS. And we're going to forcibly fail a drive for this particular demonstration. Now, the failed drive scenario is based on the resilience level of your system. Now, it goes out of scope, and I have other videos that dive deeper into different configurations for ZFS arrays, but this particular array can suffer a drive loss without a problem, and we can rebuild it. There are different scenarios for whether or not it can suffer one drive, two drive, three drive, etc., or when you build certain type of mirrors. It goes, like I said, a little out of scope of this, but I'll leave a link for those of you that want to dive deeper into all the different ZFS RAID configurations that are out there, which there are a few. Other notes, this is a 320 gig hard drive, and these are 320 gig hard drives. If you use a larger drive than the pool was built with, you can, but it will not use the full extent of that particular drive. So these being 320, if I use anything other than a 320, something bigger, you can't go smaller, that means a terabyte drive would still only use 320 of it. So you end up with a bunch of dead space on the drive. But sometimes when you're dealing with older drives, we've run into this problem before, you have only one drive of a failed array and it's hard to find that older, smaller drive. So it's not a big deal to put a larger drive in. It just won't take full advantage of it. Now, let's look at the system and dive into uh, how we're gonna fail this system over. Now we start with, it works. It's all up and running. We have a green online checkbox and there's no problems with this system. And the first thing we're gonna do is show you what happens just when you have something like a loose cable scenario, which has actually happened to me a couple times. So we're gonna switch over to the overhead and look at the drives. We're just gonna take and unplug the cable. Now, when you unplug it, we can go back, back over, over to here, and I'm gonna to go to here, and we're gonna to go to status so we can see the drives. Right away, it does let me know a drive has been removed and degraded. Now, sometimes before a drive fails, not always, you'll get a read and write or check some errors because you'll have some indicators that the drive is going bad. But that's a maybe, it is not a guarantee. But we have had, and we've seen this in one of the enterprise systems we were dealing with, we had a sled that wasn't snapped in all the way that would cause a drive to kind of come and go sometimes. Uh, we're not exactly sure. We moved it to another slot on the drive. And by the way, ZFS doesn't care what slot things are in. Uh, and the problem seemed to go away. We just didn't, we still don't have another drive to put in the other slot. We don't know if that slot's bad, but we know that drive is really happy in another spot. The good news is, even though it's degraded right now, and actually let's go in and uh, move some data around. And this is where some test data is. Um, and let's go ahead, rm-rf, this folder here. Now, the reason I'm doing this with that drive disconnected out of the array is so some data has changed since this drive became disconnected because you can just reconnect it and it will just join back in. And how fast it joins back in is going to be dependent on how much of a difference there is on this particular drive from when it was attached. So now that we've removed some data, uh, let's go back over here. It's still in a degraded mode. All right, drives plug back in. Let's hit refresh. Online. It's already started syncing it and pretty much happens really fast. Uh, the system's back online and this drive is now synced up with the other drives. So those type of scenarios are actually really easy. So if you remove a drive, you know, even it's production, it's only got to re-sync that drive based on whatever data changes happened while it was in disconnect mode. That's why I made some minor changes, but they were so minor, it really, it synced up really fast because there probably wasn't much in that particular folder. What about the next scenario when a drive fails and it's not just a loose cable, it has a catastrophic failure. So same thing again here, uh, we're just going ahead and unplug the drive. Now I actually have here another drive. So let's plug this one in. So we'll take this drive and I got to get some power over to it. All right, now we have a different drive plugged in. And we'll do a refresh over here. Now it sees that that drive was removed. And even though another drive was plugged into the same cable, ZFS isn't looking at physically what cable something was plugged into in order to be able to replace a drive. ZFS actually goes and determines like if this was part of a pool and it wasn't. So it says, well, you added a drive, but it wasn't a drive we expected. Therefore, this is where manual intervention comes in to actually replace this drive. So we go here, we're gonna choose replace. 
only disk that's extra in there. Now I'm using the force command because I think there's data on this drive. Force means don't ask questions, don't do anything, just erase it. Just, I'm not worried about the data on the drive, but if it does detect or something else on there, that is why it has a force option. So we'll go ahead and hit replace disk. Replacing, formatting, successfully replaced disk. And well, it took just a very short amount of time. Scanning, now it's going to go through the resilvering process. The resilvering process, well, that's it. It's now taken the data from the other drives to rebuild the pieces of data that need to be on this particular drive. And we have successfully replaced the drive into this pool. Now, this question seems to come up quite a bit of, can you expand the pool and all that? That's out of scope of this. I have a video, a link to about expanding VDEVs where you can add another VDEV, but no, you can't, like as I stated before, just keep popping more drives and you can only replace the existing ones. Now, one more note, these other two drives happen to be the boot pool. And I'll show briefly where those are. I've covered how to add to an existing in another video about backing up FreeNAS that I'll leave a link to of how to replace one in the boot pool or add to a boot pool that doesn't have one. But the concepts work exactly the same. But when you look at the boot pool, it's under system boot and not under the ZFS pool. Then you go to actions and you'll say boot pool status but the commands are the same. You can remove one, of course, because it's just a mirror, but there's the replace. You would choose the extra member disk and submit, and that's how you would replace one if it was one of the boot pools that had gone bad. So kind of the same concept, just a different location for those of you wondering how to boot pool. So hopefully this is helpful, and hopefully you're not watching this in a panic attack wondering what to do. Um, it's actually provided you have your array set up and with enough resilience that losing a drive isn't that big of a deal, it's really not that big of a deal to replace a drive. You can go in there, get the drive replaced. Now, one thing of note, uh, this particular board is older and doesn't always like hot swapping. So it sometimes requires a reboot when I swap drives around, but it's inconsistent. Uh, most modern boards are going to support hot swapping, especially if you're using any enterprise equipment. And when they do support hot swapping, it's no big deal. All this can be done live without any real, you know, takedown. So if you're actually working on a production system and you don't have the, um, well, let's see, you don't have the availability to shut it all down. Yes, this can be done in real time. That's one of the reasons the hot swappable racks are so popular. And because drives fail, especially under heavy load or just over time or just for no reason at all occasionally it feels like uh, that's why they usually have the you know easy to get two bays in the front all right and thanks and thank you for making it to the end of the video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more content from the channel hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like youtube to notify you when new videos come out if you'd like to hire us head over to lawrencesystems.com fill out our contact page and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on if you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.